my name is Danielle Claire, and I was just interviewed by the Keith Andrew Network, and we had a great time. We asked some great questions, and it was really fun. My name is Keith Andrew, and welcome to the Keith Andrew Network. Today, season nine, eight hundred and forty. Today, we have professional actress Danielle Claire. That's right, we have the beautiful and talented Danielle Claire on the Keith Andrew Network. Make sure to like and subscribe to the Key Fangy Network, available on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And as I always say, I'll catch you later. So the first thing I want to talk about is what is the Key Fangy Network? The whole point of my talk show is to show people that even with having a work disability, I can still amount to something. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of working disabilities and disabilities that never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you want to be. Prove to them you can stand them out to something. So that being said, 26 minutes of your time, half hour if we go over. Freedom yeah. of speech, self-expression, but it is PG, PG-13. However, you have the right to say what you want and how you want. So the first question I want to ask you is tell our audience a little bit about your background and how you started your career. Yeah, so um, I grew up in upstate New York and I did, I was always in like school plays. I always loved acting from when I was a little. Um, and then when I was 17, I started going to an acting school in, in New York City in Brooklyn. And that kind of like made me 100% sure that I wanted to pursue it as a career. Um, and yeah, from then on, I like, uh, tried to pursue it professionally. Um, so it's been like six years, I think. And I just moved to LA actually three months ago. So now it's like a whole new world, like trying it in a whole different state on the other side of the country, like trying to get my foot in the door, you know? No, absolutely. It's funny mm -hmm. to mention uh, you're from, uh, you used to be from upstate. We're in upstate New York, where you're based. Goshen? It was like two hours north of the city. It's not like super upstate, but. No, no it's funny to mention I'm actually near Harriman, near Central Valley. Oh, oh, no way. Oh my gosh. I used to go to Walden Conservatory. Do you know what that is? I heard of it. I never um, went there. I went I'm to. Near though, right? <laughs> I went to um, Monroe, um, Monroe Woodbury. Oh, that was so close to me. <laughs> it was pretty much like a rich, snobby country club. The more I think about it, I saw your name and I didn't really think about it, but you're beautiful, by the way. But the more I stare at you, it's like, why do you look so familiar? And then you mentioned ghosts. And it's like, did I come across yeah. your picture or profile? from Ghost in High School, or is it Monroe um, Woodbury? No, I didn't go to Monroe Woodbury, but I feel like I knew some people who did. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we were pretty much, like, close. Pretty much. <laughs> What's the, the next question I was going to ask you is, have you ever been to Woodbury Commons? Yes, of course. <laughs> Many times. I have friends that work there, too. So... I have a love-hate relationship with that place. Yeah. I, I like, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I can understand. <laughs> I mean, I like going, walking around, see beautiful women, but actually working there, I would have rather cut oh, my rest. I used to, I lost count how many times I quit a job. My dad likes to say to me, you know, I got fired once, one time. And mm -hmm. but everyone in my family likes to say, how many jobs had he had? And it's like, how many times did you quit a job? The guy and it just said, you know, you keep going back to the commons and the commons. Mm -hmm. You would think the commons is not gonna work out because you go, I mm -hmm. worked at US Polo, didn't work out. I worked at um to okay, Toys R Us to be fair. Mm. And he went out of business. But right. I went I went to Yankee Cano, didn't work out. Then I worked for um, Wilson's Weber, didn't work out. Oh, by the way, there are a bunch of assholes anyway. <laughs> Long story oh. about that. It's up to you if you want to hear the story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure. So the long story short is I wanted to be a cashier. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, you know, look in the comments, you know, you know, who's hiring for cashiers. Went in, 
You hired him for cashiers? Yes. Is it possible just to be a cashier? Was full thinking. Yes. Yeah. So I went in and I was like, okay, what am I doing today? Oh, you're going to be greater. So I'm just going to stand here for eight hours, not moving. Yeah. That's for, some, rough. for someone who has ADD and, you know, can't stand still, it's kind of like putting someone in a round room and telling about them standing in the corner. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, you That's know, I don't, <laughs> don't want to complain. Uh, but the other question yeah. I want to add to is mm-hmm. when you were in the college, what did you major in? And were you a study nerd or party animal? <laughs> um, so I actually didn't go to college. I went to I went straight from high school to the acting conservatory that I did in Brooklyn. Um, it was like a two year school just for acting. Um, and but if I had gone to college, college I probably would have majored in like psychology maybe because I'm super interested in that um but you know I I feel like I'm a mix of both like I wouldn't call myself a party animal I'm very like introverted but I do enjoy like meeting people and having a good time but I also like took studying seriously oh, absolutely. So kind of like <laughs> hey you have to do what you love to do right mm-hmm what about sports? Anything that you did for fun? Anything you wanted to be a professional in? Um, so when I was younger, I, I feel like I tried all the sports in school, but um, none of them really stuck with me because I was so I was like tall and like awkward and I was not built for sports in any way. Like I'm not competitive um, in that sense. So but I did enjoy like soccer um, uh like cheerleading a little bit cross country but i'm yeah i'm gonna leave that to like the pros because i don't think <laughs> i'm meant for sports <laughs> no, I hear you. now what was the one thing that you liked about cheerleading and the one thing you hated um i loved that all my friends were on my team and it was fun because we got to dance um it was pretty fun but the thing that i didn't like about it um let's see probably and this was my own fault I couldn't uh it was so hard for me to learn like flips and all that like I could never do a split I could never I wasn't flexible enough all my friends were like twirling and doing back handsprings and I was just kind of like awkwardly standing there because I didn't know how and I was too scared I'm like scared of hurting myself so probably like that I didn't push myself enough to learn how to do those things I hear you so now we're going to take you on uh, one of the ask the easy questions. So we're going to uh, take a quick muscle break. When we come back, we're going to talk about social media, disabilities, and can I pass the show over to you when we come back. Now we're back from the commercial break. The first thing I want to promote is H.B. Gibson. Home of the X Zone. Get into the zone. If you like everything entertainment, definitely check out HB Gibson. Also, we have Life of a Fighter. If you're into eating, drinking, and working out, like my beautiful guest here, make sure to definitely check out Life of a Fighter. More importantly, make sure to like and subscribe to the Key Fans Network. We have tons of great formats and challenges on the Human Pyramid Challenge, the Dumbo Challenge, so all of the great things. And stay tuned, I do have a couple of questions for you off the air about those. But anyone who likes Dumbo and Disney, definitely check out the Key Dance Network. As you know, today is Thursday, and it is Thursday Night Wrestling. Available on the Impact website, Impact Wrestling, it is Impact Wrestling. So definitely watch Impact wherever it's all available. But the first question I want to ask you is social media. But everything that you accomplish in your life, do you give thanks to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram? Do these websites give you opportunities or do you think you just have to work twice as hard to get them on your own? I mean, I think definitely social media um, because it's such, I mean, it's not new, but it is especially in like the entertainment industry. Um, it's, it's very interesting. I feel like it's a great tool for some things and maybe a little like unhealthy for others. 
But I do love the fact that I can connect with so many like actors and friends and, and um, I can like watch videos of casting directors and like agents talking in interviews. It's super helpful, especially with COVID and everything um, to know like what is going on right now. So I love that. And I love that it's so easy to access those things. Um, social media also like I have a love hate relationship with it. <laughs> because it can be too much sometimes also like you can get addicted to it and just like look at your phone too much um, especially with Instagram and it's like I like how they have that new feature coming out where you don't see likes so um because I that's important I think because <laughs> it gets to your head um yeah but I think it is a great tool for like networking and learning about the industry and so many other things oh, absolutely you know for me the top four websites I always recommend Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. Mm -hmm. And actually, no, absolutely. And you know, I actually uh, want to look you up. I, um, are you on LinkedIn? Um, so I, I don't actually know. I believe I, I made an account, but it's not like set up. <laughs> I don't really go on it, but I, I probably have an account. But I've been thinking that, like, that I need to start. <laughs> what, what I'll probably do that. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. You know, let's zoom the cuts and cuts out. Oh, no, no. I said, I'll probably do that soon. I'll probably like make my profile. No, absolutely. And the reason I bring it up is the more recommend, <laughs> I can't speak, the more recommendations you have, the better. So if you say, mm -hmm. hey, I'm doing like an audition or you're applying for an audition, tell them, go to it, my LinkedIn. I have hundreds of recommendations. Mm -hmm. Actually, having a Facebook fan page where they mm -hmm. give you reviews that's pretty yeah. much the same thing right that's a good point <laughs> so the next one i want to ask you is what is the biggest change that you made in your life from being a professional actress so what i mean like let's do like a before you know mm -hmm. how was your life and has being a professional actress do you see life differently yeah so um I guess I could say that when I was younger, I, even though I was acting, I was really, really shy. And I think, I think that I used um, acting as kind of like a way to express myself because I was too shy to do it in any, like in real life. Um, and it was fun to like play characters and be able to like be loud and crazy, but separate it from myself, you know? Um, but yeah, growing up, I was super shy, super like insecure. Um, and when I joined my acting school, I gained like a whole new perspective on everything. It was kind of like a, a big turning point in my life. I still think about it all the time um, because the things that I learned there were so valuable and the people that I meet there, like I'm still great friends with everyone. Um, and it made me feel like I belonged once I got there. And that, it like affirmed that this is definitely what I want to do for the rest of my life. And yeah, um, from then on, like, I was just like 100% sure that I wanted to act and like, um, knew that I would do anything to, <laughs> to get there, you know? <laughs> no, I hear you. So the next one I want to ask you is I saw her, you do a video and I, I don't have a filter. I just blur out the first thing pops in my head. <laughs> but, but it was the, the whole Bernie Sanders, not Bernie Sanders, um, with uh, Anthony Fauci, you know, the guy wearing a mask. You know, <laughs> if you want to wait a couple of years to things settle down, but, but yeah. you know, there's a lot of things like, oh, you know, uh, it's a big conspiracy. It's not even real. But, you know, one oh, of right. those things. But, but it's kind of like, you don't know where to stand. Because first off, you know, Cuomo and Mayor Blasio are freaking idiots. All they <laughs> care about is reopening. They want everything. Okay, I understand you want things to go back to normal, but mm -hmm. you have to be smart about it. You know, yeah, you can't just, you know, throw crap against the wall and say, well, so where's going to happen? Right. You know, so there's certain things, you, yes, you can joke about mm -hmm. after the fact, but when you're living it, it's kind of like not so funny. Yeah, I think what they were trying to do was it was like, um, obviously, it was a comedic thing, but it was 
to show that like we should be wearing masks and that if you're not like you're going to be made a fool of because that's ridiculous <laughs> like you need to be keeping yourself and other people safe so I think it was just like like a lighthearted spin on something that's very like horrible but I think um at least for me sometimes humor helps like get through things like this um because if it's all so serious it's just like too much so it's like a release you know <laughs> That's true. You know, like you express it. If you don't laugh, you're going to cry. Yeah. You know, right. when I, I said something stupid, you know, a couple of years ago, I can write a book about that, how many stupid things I said. Uh, we were at a funeral and I said, what kind of bride side? At least your neighbors won't bother you. Oh, my God. <laughs> I've definitely said stuff like that. Too. <laughs> like <in> my <laughs> But while we're on the subject, you know, during the whole quarantine, have you had this time to reflect on your career? Have you had opportunities to say, you know what, I couldn't have done it when life was normal. Now I have time to focus on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, so I, in the beginning of the pandemic, I went to go, I left New York to go stay with my family who lives in Florida. And I was kind of, um, I was there for a long time, like eight months. I went back to New York, like a few times back and forth to like get my things and move out of my apartment. But I was mostly in Florida and, um, I had nothing to do. I was very, like very bored. Like everyone, I'm sure. Um, I didn't have anything going on. Like I was kind of just being super lazy and it did give me a lot of time to reflect on like what I wanted. And I knew that when, I was like eager for things to uh, happen. And I was like, oh, like I'm wasting a whole year, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, like that's the whole world. <laughs> so um, yeah. So I think when I decided to move to LA in February, I was just excited to like be on my own again and have a life and like audition again and try to see what LA is all about, you know, um, acting wise and like see the opportunities. Um, yeah. So it definitely made me think, think long and hard about what I want. And now I feel like I'm more focused than I was in New York because I'm like, all right, this is it. Like, this is what I want to do. Life is short. I need to go with it. I agree with you 100%. Mm -hmm. And the next question I want to ask is disabilities. Have you, besides me, obviously, have you worked with people with disabilities? And for people who want to follow in your footsteps, what are some of the best advice you can give and were given to you? Mm. Um, so let me think. I don't believe I've ever worked with anyone who had a disability per se, but I guess my advice for someone who wants to follow in my footsteps would be to not give up and to believe in yourself because that is what's going to get you to where you want to be. Um, you have to like believe in your instincts and trust yourself and trust that you are where you're supposed to be. Um, even though it's really hard at times, especially with acting, because it's like constant rejection and less <laughs> so unstable, but if it's something that you know for sure that you want to do, like just own that and just do it. Do it scared. Do it anyway. <laughs> well, I agree with you. Now, before mm -hmm. I pass the show over to you, I have two more questions. The first one on X is how can our listeners get in touch with you? Um, so I have an Instagram, Danielle Claire. Um, I guess you could reach out to me on that. And I do have a Facebook um because my real last name is king claire is like my stage name um but yeah that's pretty much the social media that i have i used to have a website but i got rid of it before i got new headshots and i need to like start that up again but yeah instagram is probably the easiest way you know i want you to be brutally honest when i first approached you to be a guest on my talk show what made you say yes how do you feel now and what do you recommend it to all your friends Oh, I was like honored. <laughs> I was like, this is so cool. Um, yeah, I'm so happy we're doing this. And yes, of course. I told my friend about it earlier today. I was like, I'm doing this interview. <laughs> hey, if you know any actresses, send them my way or any actors. Yeah. The best way they can follow me is on Instagram, hashtag mm -hmm. Q 
key fans you know are no our Instagrams will be on the bottom of the screens. And yes, I do talk with my hands as far as I have it. <laughs> but with the last seven minutes, I'm going to pass it over to you. Was there okay. anything you want to know? Anything you want to talk about? Any funny stories? This is your time. Let's see. I did want to ask you about like how long you've been doing the Keith Andrew Network and like how it's evolved from when you started um, and like where you want it to, to go from here. All right. You know, for the most part, I've been doing this for almost eight years. Next Thursday, oh June 10th, will be officially eight years and I would love to have you part of it. Mm-hmm. It will be my... Now, go ahead. <laughs> Is it congratulations? No, I appreciate that. Thank you. So next week, Thursday, is going to be my special eight-year anniversary episode where I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I think for one time, only for once a year, I can tell my story from the beginning. We're going to yeah. do a Q&A. So it's, if you're in the East Coast, it's going to be 5 o'clock. If you're on the West Coast, it's going to be 2 o'clock, okay. half hour. Freedom, speech, self-expression. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, when I first started, give you a quick highlight. I started like from, I give, if it doesn't cut off, I can show you. You know how you see your reflection on the screen? Yeah. It's, that's like season one. So I recorded fun phone to the computer screen. Oh, wow. And before that, I was like, oh, you know, I, w- I want to do like an interview. So I... Wanted, I did audio interviews. I did 72 and I like, this is ridiculous. I'm having social anxiety. I'm hack attacks. I'm talking to a damn phone, but I'm still getting anxious. So I did it over. That's where you sort of phone. And mm-hmm. people are like, you know, have you got to take it seriously? Or you have a great message? Why are you taking it? Why don't you have sponsors and this and that? Just give me the quick highlights. So in 2015, I came across Ecamm where I had, you know, where you can record Skype calls. So now it's like cut in half, I'm on the right, you're on the left. Or if you interview me, we can flip it, you're on the left, I'm on the right. Mm-hmm. Uh, recently, I came across Zoom, and thank God for bed. I don't have to decorate my brother's bed anymore. I have an <laughs> actual background. Yeah, it's legit. And, no, absolutely. <laughs> and thanks to you, we're up to 840. Well, it's noise, I, I did over 1,000. But, you know, I mess on people who are nice. Some people are jackasses. But you're going to web to learn. The biggest mistake I was I didn't do was the permission forms. I should have had that at the very beginning. This was in the beginning. I was thinking people by the word. And then we're going back out and making auto threats. So now, on anti network, I have, you know, I actually made a card so I can actually promote it. You can see so many different playlists. And if you're interested, I would love to invite you to be part of my channel. Yeah. You know, I have you know some Skype interviews that I did. I do have a TV interview for right now. I did. Oh. You're from my brand ambassador, so I would love to talk to you about being one. Um, oh, wow. There's nine seasons of the Keith Engine Network. You can see for almost you would think nine years, nine seasons, but no. But yeah, you see the process from 2013 all the way up to now. Wow. I interviewed WWE, WCW, ECW wrestlers. Um, let's see on here. I have the Dumbo Challenge, where I'm a big fan of Dumbo. So for people who want to know what that is, sorry, try and kiss my breath. <laughs> for people who want to know what that is, it's pretty much I would have a group of people. It, it's it's kind of like a tooth thing. One, I would love to do one with you, where you would reenact the lines. Sorry, bend my tongue. But you no. would reenact the lines, and I would match them up. It's like, okay, this is kind of like your cell phone distance tape. Then it's kind of like, you know, it's really interesting. But you can do the lines, but that kind of gets boring. Why not make it a challenge? So if you can you do one with an exercise ball or with a found exercise ball, each person would be like once in a matriarch. You can be like a oh, one elephant, you have another friend, and you guys can actually climb up on top of each other. But while doing that, you're reenacting the lines from the movie. And he said, okay, we're going to make it our own thing and how we want to see it. Oh, wow. So That's right, really cool. No, what do you think? Would you do something like that? 
Wait, so it's it's in person? Well, you can either do one or two ways. One, just reenact the wines. And the other ones, okay. you have a group of friends together, and you mm-hmm. climb on top of each other. But each person would be a character from the film. That's really funny. <laughs> I will definitely talk to my friends about it. <laughs> I don't know if I'm like... <laughs> I'm like nervous to go on top of someone. <laughs> so that a, sounds like a good idea. <laughs> I know it sounds, you know, a lot of people are like, it's dumb, it sounds perverted. No, it it's isn't. not dumb. It sounds really cool. No, absolutely. I got one team already. I'm working on another, trying to make mm-hmm. it into a traditional thing. And I was like, people are like, oh, I love Dumbo. I wish they could do this. I wish they could do that. Hey, why not turn it into your own thing? So yeah. I actually have the jumble book one where you pretend you're marching and you're oh, right of the elephants. Um, you know, I have CEOs, I have comedians, professional singers. I tried to keep, and this is the biggest thing I get from my talk show. It's like, you're saying your show is about disabilities. Do you just interview people with disabilities? Yes and no. I have a learning disability. But I try to cater to everyone. You know, that's why I had actors, actresses, models. I try to get people from 13 to, I actually had kid actors. So from 13 old to 18, okay, they would like this, they would like that. How can I connect with 21 and up? Okay, let's do professional wrestling, let's do this, let's do that. Okay, now you're in between 30s. To have his forties, how can he connect with that audience? So mm-hmm. I, it's a world of everything. That mm-hmm. okay? Yes, it's goofy. It's kitty. To okay, let's talk about some serious stuff. To mm-hmm. just have a good time with it. So when yeah. I tell people about it's show about disabilities, they automatically assume I'm not talking about you know someone with one arm or one leg or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. That's not the message. The message I'm trying to share with everyone is that labels don't dictate right. who you are and who you want to be. And I like to turn myself into an example. Yes, of course. Uh, I'm going to give you an extra two minutes. Was there anything else you wanted to talk about wrapping up our talk show segment? Um, let me think. Do you have any more questions? <laughs> <laughs> well, I do have some ideas off the air, but I do want to talk to you about, okay. about the challenges. And I'm always mm-hmm. looking for people to be one of my brand ambassadors. So if, if anyone's mm-hmm. interested, definitely hit me up. Well, okay. wrapping up or talk so segment. And sorry, you know, part of my disability, when I go do my interview as a way, my disability shows more in on the show. Why I created it. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. the proof, but with that being said, wrapping up, everyone can follow Keith Angie Network on KeithAngieNetwork.com. It was a real honor and privilege having you as a guest. I'm looking forward to part two. And as I always say to my listeners, I catch you later. Mm-hmm.